Hello and thank you for taking time out to listen to this short presentation about the role of the social worker at St Anne's Hospice. My name is Donna Quinn, I'm a social worker based at the Hill Green site. So today's video will be about the role of the hospice social worker. What do we do? So the social workers are part of the patient and family support team and we work alongside chaplaincy and the Let's Talk service who provide spiritual bereavement and counselling support for patients and families. Lisa Corbett is the team leader and she is also a social worker. The social work role at the hospice is varied and can entail supporting patients with discharge planning, signposting for support with financial and legal matters and advocating for patients and families. Social workers often act as the role of the advocate for patients and families, um, particularly around navigating the social care system if we are talking about discharge with families. The question, what do social workers do, is, is quite a tricky one to answer and hopefully this short presentation will give you some ideas of our day-to-day -day work. So there are two social workers based at each site. So two social workers based at Little Halton and two social workers based at Heal Green. And as I said before, there's also Lisa Corbett, who is the manager of the patient family support team, who's also a social worker. The social workers at both sites support patients and family members who are known to either the inpatient unit, the Being You Centre, medical outpatients, community specialist palliative care team, and also the hospice at home team. We can see people in the hospice or in their own homes. Um, the seeing people in their own homes gives, can give quite a different perspective and more, maybe a more realistic perspective as well of how people are managing and the support that they may need. Within the hospice, the social workers are the safeguarding leads. So safeguarding is everyone's responsibility, but the social workers are there to support and advise. So if anyone has any concerns with regards to the patient, a family member or children, please discuss them with the social workers. Safeguarding training at the hospice is facilitated by the safeguarding lead, Lisa Corbett. Social workers are also the mental capacity leads at St Anne's Hospice. Every day we make decisions about lots of things in our lives. The ability to make these decisions is called mental capacity. The Mental Capacity Act underpins all work that a social worker does and helps and protects people over the age of 16 who have limited capacity to make decisions. There are five statutory principles to the Mental Capacity Act. So number one, a person must be assumed to have capacity unless it is established that they lack capacity. A person, number two, a person is not to be treated as unable to make a decision unless all practicable steps have been taken to help them without success. Number three, a person is not to be treated as unable to make a decision merely because he makes an unwise decision. Number four, an act done or decision made under the act for on behalf of a person who lacks mental capacity must be done or made in their best interest. Number five, before the act is done or the decision is made, a regard must be had to whether the purpose for which it is needed can be effectively achieved in a way that is less restrictive of the person's rights and freedom of action. Capacity assessments are time and decision specific and they are not blanket assessments. So, for example, if a patient has been assessed as lacking capacity to make a decision with regards to continuing to stay at the hospice for care and treatment, that is specific to that decision. The decision around discharge is a separate decision and a separate capacity assessment would need to be completed. There's reason to doubt that person's capacity. Social workers will complete assessments in relation to discharge destination support needed. Doctors will complete assessments in relation to medical decisions at the hospice. If a patient does not have capacity to consent to the admission and a move to St Anne's Hospice under a best interest decision, then the deprivation of living safeguards need to be applied for. Capacity needs to be assessed in relation to the person deciding to be accommodated at St Anne's Hospice for care and treatment. If they are deemed to lack capacity in relation to this decision, an application for a dolls needs to be made to their local authority. 
does ensure people who cannot consent to their care arrangements in a care home, hospital or hospice are protected if those arrangements deprive them of their liberty. Please see social workers for further information about DARLS. So here at the hospice, we work as part of a multidisciplinary team. Each cog within that team is important and we can't work in isolation. So together we work to meet the needs of patients and families, covering the whole spectrum of palliative care, medical, spiritual, emotional and social. We often overlap a little and we offer some level of emotional and spiritual support in our roles as social workers. So a key part of the social worker role is, is around discharge planning. We're not employed by a local authority, we're employed by St Anne's Hospice, so we are unable to commission services. So this means we need to liaise with the relevant local authority, often to be in healthcare team. We provide patients and their families with the options for discharge from the hospice. These can include discharge home with caring support, or if someone's care needs are greater than can be supported at home, then we, we discuss nursing care. Social workers discuss the available funding options, which come from either the NHS through the continued healthcare funding stream or the local authority, which is a means tested funding team. We liaise with over eight different local authorities, including co commissioning groups, each with having each have their own assessments, eligibility criteria, policies and procedures. Social workers manage expectations as patient, many patients and their families are new to accessing and navigating the care system. And as, as said before, there's, there's different eligibility criteria and procedures for each of those areas. Social workers will also support and signpost with regards to lasting power of attorneys, wills and benefit queries. There are two types of lasting power of attorney. One is finance and there's one for welfare. If when a patient arrives at the hospice or they're seen within medical outpatients, for example, if they say there is a lasting power of attorney and then that needs to be seen and then a copy kept on, the, on file at the hospice. The lasting power of attorneys also need to be registered before they can be used. Finance can be used when someone has capacity and when they don't. The welfare lasting power of attorney can only be used when someone has been assessed as lacking capacity to make a specific decision relating to their welfare. If a, person, person, if a patient wishes to, wishes to apply for a lasting power of attorney, social workers can support with this process. As the benefit systems change frequently, we make referrals or signpost patients and families to benefits advisors or citizens advice advisors. As social workers, we are allowed to witness wills here at the hospice, as long as the hospice is not mentioned within the will as a beneficiary. It is the solicitor's responsibility to assess the capacity of the person making the will if there is a reason to doubt it. The organisation's fundraising department also has a wills month and a list of solicitors. These are not recommendations, but we can share this information with patients to support them to um, write their will. There is also a wills policy accessible on the staff hub. Social workers within their role also support with advanced care planning. And we also support families who have queries or uncertainties about funeral planning. Funeral poverty is a growing national crisis. Sometimes funeral wishes have not been thought about and social workers support families with this. Social workers can also support patients to plan their own funerals and to contact relevant funeral directors. Social workers can also support families when their relative has died to access grants and explore affordable funerals. St Anne's Hospice is registered to provide care and support for adults over the age of 18. However, children do come into the hospice to visit their relatives. Social workers work as part of the patient family support team and support both patients and families. Carers forms are provided to patients on admission to give to their family members in return to help identify what support they may need. Um, these forms are returned to the social workers and social workers can signpost carers to carer support in their area and provide carer support to the person. Social workers support adults to support children. As we said, that we're not registered to work to support children or anyone under the age of 18. 
and we, so we often refer to organisations such as Child Bereavement UK and Winston's Wish. We have literature in the social work office to support with conversations around death and dying with children also. So um, I hope this presentation has given you a, an idea of the role of the social worker and what, what our, our role entails. We do have um, a lot of random requests made to us, for example, there's a misunderstanding around the social workers involvement with housing applications. We, we don't have a secret stash of bungalows and we don't have any influence over the housing system. However, we can support patients and families with housing applications and liaise with housing. Um, we're often thought to be pet transportation. We've often helped with pet transportation, assisting uh, with a house move by being the pet transporter, collecting pets from kennels and bringing them to the hospice, or being asked to write an alpaca visiting policy. We've arranged Christmas dinners, organising community lunches for people without family and facilitating Christmas lunches in the hospice. We've organised weddings. We're able to request registrars to marry patients here at the hospice under emergency circumstances. Um, the doctor's letter is required and with the party planned for these occasions. Um, shopping in certain circumstances, particularly in COVID, um, we'll complete shopping trips for patients for birthdays, Christmases, Valentine's Day presents for, for partners. Um, so it is a very varied role. And if, if you're unsure of whether we can help with something, please don't be afraid to ask. Um, if we don't know the answer or aren't in a position to help, we will find out the answer or we'll find out somebody who can. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation.